Right, we're on. Over to you, Marcus. Well, today we've got Danny Greenslade, middle name Glover. Is that right? Incorrect. No middle name. No middle name, but I've made Glover up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you are now going to be known as Danny Glover Greenslade. Yeah. <laughs> um, date of birth in 1994, 29th of January. Wrong again. You'd be on Google, innit? 26. Wrong. 28 for the 9th, 95. So you're 27. 24. 26. 24. I'll tell yeah. you what. Hang on a minute. He's not in. He can't get a service, he's can he? He's too young. We, <laughs> we, we haven't yes. signed him. I've got down here 37. <laughs> I thought he'd come to 37. He looks 37. <laughs> right. You just tell me how handsome I am. I tell you what, it's where I live in Frampton, we're so far behind. We mm. Google ain't with us, so I've had to guess all the guess all the answers. <laughs> uh, right, we've established that's gone brilliantly, so no, let's not worry about that. Um, but Danny, for everyone else, um, I've known you for for some time. Um, can you give us a bit of an intro about your playing career, where you started, and to to date, really? Yeah. Um, so I was at Bristol Rovers when I was young, so similar to like Rusty, so I was there from like a really young age. So about 21, 22. And I think I first went on loan to like um, Western and that. So when I was at Bristol Rovers, for I signed for yourself. Um, yep. And then from there, signed at Western. So I was there for, what, a season, I think I was there? And uh, you? But season under me and the season prior, I think it was, or half yeah, so I was Yeah, so I was on loan then, like half season for that. And then I went from there, signed to Hereford. I was there for the last two seasons. And now here we are. Mm. Um, did you go on loan at Gloucester at all? Yeah, so I was on loan at Gloucester. I went on loan at Bath. Done all of, you know, it's like usual loan circle kind of thing. So I'd done Bath, yeah. Gloucester, and Western. And have you, got, um, have you got any Welsh caps at all, Danny? Nah, nothing. I think I was on maybe one of the standby lists, but unless you're at Cardiff, Swansea, or not Bristol Rovers, basically, then you're not going to get much of a snip. You so. had the same message as me, Os, um, Cookie. Alex Bray messaged me to say, make sure you ask Danny if he's got any Welsh caps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's at Swansea, you have a Bristol Rovers, yeah. so there's a difference yeah. for you. Alex is horrible like that. He just wanted yeah. us to point out he's got a Welsh cap. Um, <laughs> been it. But um, I know for a fact that obviously prior me having you, a lot of clubs wanted you at our level. Yeah. Um, and I, I know Western was pleased to get you, and it was only natural for you to go to a big club like Hereford and, and the stuff. And, and we're pleased that we've got you, and, and obviously Cookie's been chatting to you for some time now so Cookie yeah. I know that you want to say a little bit about how, how hard it was not so much hard to get Danny but how long it's been from the day of chatting to him yeah I mean the the, um, the slight problem that we've got is because he has been injured over the last sort of year with a couple of niggly injuries so we would have probably come in for him a little bit earlier than what we actually did do um, if he if he was playing at that time so We've got to be a little bit careful because you've just had an operation as well, haven't you, Danny, on your groin? Yeah. So, um, you know, very kindly, the, the club said to me, look, if you think he's a good player and you think he's worth the gamble, then, um, you know, let's do it. So, you know, I don't see it as a gamble. We've just got to be really careful to get him back 100% fit. We're not going to play until uh, October the 3rd at the earliest. So he's got no rush to get back fit. It's really, really important that we look after him. He looks after himself. And actually, when, when he turned up at training the other night, he looks he looks reasonably fit anyway, doesn't he? He looks good body. He looks a lot fitter than others. Um, and that's testament for himself, for keeping himself fit before he went in for the operation. He's come out and now he's started to run and do bits and bobs. So it's, it's a testament to himself, really. Yeah. But he's, um, he's he obviously fits in with our player profile. He's quite an attacking left-sided player. Um, I personally think he can play as a standard left-back in a flat-back four. He can play as a wing-back as well, so he gives us a few options. He is naturally left-footed, so we haven't got a lot of left-footers uh, within the, the club at the moment, so that's a bit of a bonus, I see. And, um, yeah, I just think, you know, I, I did his level two probably about 10 years ago now, I would think, when he was at Bristol Rovers. And, you know, even then he had a good attitude, he was a good lad, and that does, that does make a lot of difference to us, doesn't it, in, in general, their attitude. Yeah, and I think that's, well, when Danny, I think we finished about eighth or ninth in a conference south with Danny and outside, I think you must have played 
every single game, Danny. Is that yeah. about right? All yeah. Season. Probably about 45 games, 50 games that year. Yeah. So we're, we're, hopefully we'll have successful cut runs and you'll probably be hopefully playing the same amount. And yeah. to you, Cookie, I, I know how, how brilliant Jay done for us last to the end of last year and how well the loans have worked. But it's nothing better than getting your own player in, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and credit to Jay Falston as well, because Jay phoned us up and said, you know, would we be interested? And I said, yeah, I am definitely interested in re-signing you. But I've just got this lad that we've seen over the last three or four years that we've known for even longer than that, that I just want to try and go down that road and sign him first. Otherwise, we, we would have signed Jay on, to be quite honest, because yeah. he didn't let us down. He was, he was very keen to re-sign. So, um, you know, from our point of view, we've, we've really put all our eggs in one basket with Danny because we do really believe in him and we, we really do think he is that good. And when, when he does get 100% fit and he's, he's got 10, 15 games under his belt, pe people and the fans are going to see that. And I, I personally think, um, you know, he's a football league player who's playing at our level like, you know, there are a few. Yeah. in our division but he is definitely one of those that could play the football league easy I think um, the year I was with Danny I don't think I, I did like the full back at Woking but I don't think there was a better left back in our league than what Danny was and I think even like you said about an attacking left back he's quite comfortable and you joining in Danny and looking after the ball and he keeps it the wrong side of the, the defender so he's always in control of the football um, for our fans Dan what, what can they expect to see from you in the ne that next 10 months? Um, well, hopefully, first things first, make sure I'm on the pitch to start with, so after the <laughs> season I've had. <laughs> but um, no, like I said, like fully committed player, like won't shake a challenge or anything like that. I think that's the main thing is that you'll get 100% honesty out of me, the first and foremost. And then hopefully then you've got a bit of quality on the ball and can go both ways, really. Yeah, and I think that's what they see. They see commitment because I remember us playing against well in a way um, I don't know if you'll remember it because it was yeah. the, your ankle completely swelled up afterwards. Come the Tuesday, I was planning to play a young kid out the academy at left back, and all of a sudden you turned up on a Tuesday night saying, No, I'm playing. Um, yeah. And I know from co working with Cookie, that's the type of players he wants. Now, he might not play you because he might say, Actually, no, it's better for you to rest, but we weren't in that position, and you went out and you played 90 minutes and you're outstanding. So I think our fans were all like that. And especially with your quality, it'd be great. Um, so we're quite looking forward to that. Um, Cookie, we've discussed it, um, and obviously Danny's a predominant fullback. Um, they're so important now in the mo modern game because um, previous they were to, to a penny, weren't they? You get them, everyone could play fullback. Even you get a, a centre forward who could easily play fullback. <laughs> <laughs> That's more for Mike Green, who will, if he watches this, he'll have a go at me and cookie. But they're so important now in the modern game, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I mean, there's there's a couple of uh, players that we've liked over the last couple of seasons as well. Um, I mean, there was a lad who was who's just gone from Bath, actually, Connor Riley Lowe, who was at Churo, I think it was, a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. And um, he played against us. He looked fantastic. So you, you remember these players, don't you, as you're playing against them and you... I've got a little book where I mark them down as well, and I think, yeah, if, you know, if they ever become available, they might be worth a phone call. And um, you know, that's basically what's happened with Dan. Really, I watched a lot of games when. Um, what round did the FA Cup did you get through to, Matt? When you was at Western, we were in the second round. Second we played round. Wrexham or something like that. Yeah, so that, that season, I must have watched, I think, probably five games that season. I think. And I, I would say three out of those five games, Danny, I thought, was, uh, you know, outstanding, along with um, Dale Grubb as well, uh, who was in that particular team. So, you know, for me, if he's got that kind of quality where he can be a little bit of a game changer as well, as well as being a steady Eddie left back, then uh, he, he should fit right into the way that we play. Um, what are you looking forward to most, Danny? Like, uh, it's obviously going to be playing, but... Um, you joined yeah. a new club. Um, what are you looking forward to now coming across to Chippenham? Well, I think looking at the team you guys have managed to put together, I don't think there's any reason why we can't be obviously looking upwards rather than downwards because I know I've seen a few yeah. of these calls and you say you'd want to be looking, like I said, down the table. 
and like I say, he was signed some good quality players. So whoever's in front of me, whether it be Sterney, who just signed, who can quite easily like come into the position which Grubby used to play when I was at West, and he'd come in the inside and I just bomb on round him. Or whether it's Alex Bray, who probably I'd probably back up a little bit more from behind and let him get one one of his defenders. So just looking forward to building relationships, getting other teammates a bit more, and like I said, hopefully having a good season and showing what I can do really. Yeah, and with the versatility, Cookie, you've got Danny that can play left back, you've got Pars that can play left back, you've got Danny that could slip in at left side centre off, Danny can play left wing back, you could also go and do a job as a holding midfielder, like Ryan Case can do. We've got quite a few people that can play loads of different positions, and obviously with the situation of COVID and financially how all the clubs are going to be, that's quite important this year. Yeah, because, I, you know, like we've said before, haven't we, Matt? We're going to be playing a few Saturday, Tuesday, Saturdays, uh, probably for the first two months of the season, I, I can see. I know I know the season's been extended through to the end of May, but it's going to be, it will be a tough start. So we need, with that squad of 16 that we've got, we're also then going to have to bring in uh, maybe three or four of the youth team players as well. Um, and they, they've come training with us, um, people like Ethan Hill, that Joe Sharples has got from Forest Green this year. We've still got Danny Ware from the, um, the academy system last year. Um, and there's Joe Smedley. Joel's, Joel's played really, really well. Yeah, he has. In training so far. I know we've only had four sessions, but actually he started fantastic. So, you know, we've got a couple of games coming up, one against Fairford, one against Buckland. Unfortunately, it's not going to be any fans allowed to go. But... Um, it will be mainly for us to see uh, the lads who are already what we've just brought in, but also a load of trialists as well. We've got 10 trialists to have a look at. And so it would it'd be nice to have a look at maybe a couple of the academy lads within those games as well, just to see you know, if it's a fringe player or if it's somebody that we think's worth investing the time with over the next season that we could maybe get eight, nine, ten games out of them. I'd quite like to do that as well if we can do yeah, good. Um, like you, you've obviously done your own work, Danny, and I know you do. And if you're playing against someone, you probably find out what their strengths and weaknesses are, and that's that's what we do as a club as well. So you'll know that. Um, I've done a bit of my own work, and Cookie has his favourites in the club, and I'm not just saying it's Russie; he, he has others as well. But it is mainly <laughs> Russie um, for no no reasons apart from they love each other. You're a Liverpool fan, I'm right, and I yeah. Yeah. I think he's a Liverpool fan. I don't like Liverpool by any stretch. <laughs> but today's quiz is going to be based on Liverpool. Okay, okay. this is for you. Mm-hmm. Because they've won the league, which really hurts, um, I will do it on Liverpool for you. So, because it's on probably one of your loves, I've got seven questions. I expect you to get four. Okay. If you don't, if, I mean, you're not as thick as most of our players, so you should be all right. <laughs> you can't ask Cookie, okay? Okay. Yeah. Right. Are you ready? Cookie, mark these down because I keep getting the numbers oh, wrong anyway. Wait, so are these going to be multi-choice or are they going to be... They're going to be multiple choice if you need okay. it, but I don't okay. think you're going to need it. Um, when was Liverpool founded? Uh, oh, what's a multi-choice? <laughs> a multi-choice. There, there wasn't really, but I'm going to give oh. you it. Anyway, 1887, yeah. 1892 or yeah. 1897? 1892. Correct. Always go down the middle. I've seen it on the chain. <laughs> I, I should have put that one last. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're not going to have a multiple choice for this one. Okay. Who did Liverpool beat in the 2005 European Cup final? AC Milan. Correct. Okay. Where was Liverpool... This isn't one of the questions, but my mate okay. will want me to ask this. Mm-hmm. Where, what was Liverpool f- formed from? Weren't they formed from Everton, basically? They were don't Everton be stupid. No. No, I don't believe that. Just making it up now. I might just clean the phone. I might be making it up. But for my mate, who's an Everton fan, I'm saying that you're Everton reserves, okay? Just for today. Mm-hmm. When did Liverpool win their first ever FA Cup final? Uh, is this Marty Choice again or not? 1962, 1963, yeah. or 1965? Uh, 62. Did you go down the middle again or first? It's first. 1965. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Who scored Liverpool's only goal in the 1978 
European Cup final? Not very easy, are they? Am I allowed? Doing as I went born. I was I was born in 1978. <laughs> okay, and I didn't know it. Um, Suki will know this one, but you can't phone a friend. <laughs> want to be a millionaire. Have a uh, guess. He's a legend. Roger Hunt. Roger Hunt. No, no. Tommy King Sam. Kenny Dalgleish. Oh, I. <laughs> <laughs> he got it wrong, did you? <laughs> I thought about the other European Cup final. Put it this way. I've got this, I got this off Frampton's Google, so it could be wrong. Okay. From a lot Okay. This one's easy for you. You're not having... Who is Liverpool's record transfer signing? Uh, Van Dijk. How much for? 75 mil, was it? Correct. Correct. Yeah, so you've only become a fan recently. That's good to, good to know. Glory on the only last two seasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, which road run behind the cop stand at Anfield? Uh, you ever been to Liverpool? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I should know it, really. It's a tough it's, one. Because the, the main road's Anfield Road, so it's obviously not that one. No, it's um, not. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the Cop Road. I've got no idea. Unlucky. Walton Breck Road. Oh, no chance. No chance. I wouldn't have got that one as well, Dan. Okay. Nah. Who did Liverpool beat in the 1984 European Cup final? Uh, 1984. They're Italian. Benfica. They're, Ita- oh, they're Italian. They're Italian. Yeah. Uh, you, Juventus. Do you know Cookie? I thought it was Juventus. It's Roma. Ah, they're not very easy today, are they? I've watched some of the others. I think I could have got all seven, but these. Yeah, I was tr- trying to test you because I actually thought you were brighter than the other lads. Obviously not. So... <laughs> 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 but that will finish. You. I don't know how many you got. How many you get, Cookie? Out of seven, he has got three. Correct. Yeah, that's probably better than others. Probably on the par. It's better running style when we come back. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's <laughs> fine. Um, Cookie, I know you touched on the pre-season friendlies that we've got coming up. We've got two in a week, um, and then we've got uh, Melsham afterwards. What's um, you said a little bit about playing these uh, some of the lads that have come on to to have a look at us and us to have a look at them. Um, what are we going to see from the current squad as well in, in those games? Are we going to see many minutes from them or just easing them yeah, in? Yeah, it's, it's just really to give them a few minutes. It won't be 90 minutes because we're going to try and ease them in a little bit. We've got, obviously, still eight weeks left until we start the season, more or less. So we're going to be looking at maybe 45 minutes to 70 minutes for most of them. And we'll try and give the trialists um, a few more minutes than that, really, because we've got to have a look at them. We've got to be fair yeah. them. They've all they've all been training with us. So I just think it's not going to be a true reflection of the of the squad of the team that is going to be starting these games because it's going to be full of trouble, basically. So we we had the option to either cancel these games once we knew that we were going to be kicking off at October the third, or we were going to bear with it and play a number of games and utilise possibly the academy squad uh, with some of the trialists. So um, I would I would think six out of the nine, ten games, what we've got planned are going to be uh, a true reflection of what the, you know, the squad is to start the season, basically. And for you, Dan, um, we don't, as a, as a management team, we don't want to put a time and date on when we expect to see fully playing contact uh, football again. But when you're hoping to be on the training field with the lads, what's, what's in, in your mind that I want to be out and about doing it on this date? Yeah, um, well, definitely before the end of the month. I think, like I said, like I joined in training doing the walking stuff the other day and it all feels fine. It's just a case there's still a little bit of swell in there at the moment. So as soon as that goes down, then I feel like I should be fine and join back in. So like I said, hopefully no more than two, three weeks, really. And and with that, it probably gives, it gives you practically a pre-season to get ready. So uh, it's all, yeah, exactly. I, spoke, I spoke to other members of the, of the squad and ones that, I, that Cookies work with in pre-season, but I haven't. And I think Cookie had him playing for 245s, 260s and 290s, which really geared him up ready to hit the ground running. And I joined just with Cookie just as they 
at the end of pre-season and um, they hit the ground running. Both players were started the season well. So there's no reason why you can't be at that peak come October the 3rd, which seems yeah. to be an FA Cup game cookie. That's going to be right, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. And to be honest, because we thought it was going to be early September to mid-September, then we planned in the games for August. But August now doesn't become that important to us. It's about face fitness and giving a few of the lads some, some minutes. Yeah, but actually the important month for us now is September. Um, so that they're, you know, they're firing on all cylinders and they're raring to go. And obviously we can uh, you know, just monitor what is expected of their fitness levels during that month in September. So it'd be, it'd be nice to be fit and playing and doing well at all, but it actually doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, that's all for the questions, Dan. Um, so look, we appreciate your time on a Sunday afternoon um, when Cookie and myself usually like to go and um, have a look at the local scenery of bars. Um, however, we can't do that today. Um, but look, we're... You have, we're playing Tuesday, so you'll be resting and rehabbing. Um, so good luck with that, and um, we'll see you back again at training. Yeah, well done, yeah. Dan. Cheers, see you later, guys. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.